In this video, we'll be discussing solving equations. Just a reminder that when we talk about solving, we're talking about finding the value of the variable that makes the equation true. Sometimes you might see the word root used or the word solution. These mean the same thing. For finding the root, we're also finding the solution. And our strategies when we're solving equations is to collect all variable terms on one side of the equation, one side of the equal sign, and all of the constant terms on the other side. Some equations are easier to solve than others. Some require one step and some require many steps. And we'll look at a few different examples in this video. So my first example, x plus 5 equals negative 9. Here we need to isolate the variable x on one side of the equal sign, which means we need to pick up that positive 5 term and move it to the other side of the equal sign. And when we move that positive 5 to the other side of the equal sign, it changes to its opposite. So if it's positive 5 on the left, it would be negative 5 on the right. And once we've moved it, to the other side of the equal sign, we can just simplify what's on the right-hand side. Negative 9, take away 5, would be negative 14. This is a one-step equation. Likewise, question B, if I have a statement like negative x equals 12, and I want to solve for x, I need to isolate the variable x. Even though there's no real number here on the left-hand side, we understand that that negative sign means negative 1. That's negative 1 multiplied by x. So if I'm going to isolate the variable x, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, or imagine picking up that negative 1 moving it to the other side of the equal sign where it becomes the opposite operation, which would be division. So my solution would be x equals negative 12. Notice how when we move addition or subtraction to the other side of the equal sign, it changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. And notice how when we're moving multiplication or division to the other side of the equal sign, we don't change the sign. So we can make things more complicated by adding more steps. So here, negative 2m plus 6 equals 4. I still approach this the same way. I want to isolate the variable on one side of the equal sign. And I do that by first moving any constant terms to the opposite side. When I move that constant term, that positive 6 to the other side, it becomes negative 6, which I can simplify to make negative 2. And now I want to isolate the variable m by moving that negative 2 times m to the other side of the equal sign. When I do that, it becomes division. And my solution would be m equals 1. The only way we can really make these questions more complicated is by adding more terms adding variables to either side of the equal sign, or maybe even adding in brackets like we've done in question D. When we have a question like this with brackets, we need to get rid of the brackets first, and we can do that by, in this case, distributing. Distributing that 2 into the first set of brackets, multiplying all the terms in there by 2. And on the right-hand side, remember when there is a negative in front of the brackets, we change all the signs inside the bracket to the opposite. Now before I start moving terms and constants around, I can do some cleaning up. I can collect like terms on the right hand side. This makes it a little bit easier to manipulate. As I bring that 8y term over to the left-hand side, it becomes negative. When I bring the 14 to the right-hand side, it becomes negative. And I 
end up with negative 6y equals negative 12. My last step is to divide both sides by negative 6. And when I do that, my final answer is y equals 2. One last question to finish off this video, a word problem. A triangle has angle measures that are related as follows. The largest angle is triple the smallest, and the middle angle is double the smallest. We want to find the measures of the angle. So I'm going to start this by saying let's let the variable x represent or be the smallest angle. And I've drawn a triangle to help me out here. I'm going to label one of the one of the angles there x. Working up, the middle angle is double the smallest angle, so 2x would be a nice way to represent the middle angle. The largest angle is triple the smallest, so I could represent that as 3x, and that represents my largest angle. Call that 3x. We also should remember that if we add all of the angles up inside a triangle, they're equal to 180 degrees. So that's me determine an equation for what these three angles in this triangle would add up to. x plus 2x plus 3x has to equal 180 degrees. These are all like terms, so I can add them up and I get 6x equals 180 degrees. If I divide both sides by 6, I get a value of x equals 30. So my smallest angle is 30 degrees. My next smallest angle would be double that, 2 times 30. My next smallest angle would be 60 degrees. My largest angle, 3x, would be 3 times 30, or 90 degrees. So I've used a little bit of algebra to solve this problem, and I can summarize the angles are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Ooh.